Good evening. The evidence lasted two and a half weeks, but it took the jury just two hours to find Albert Dryden guilty of murder. The shooting of council official Harry Collinson had been witnessed by a BBC North camera crew. Tonight, we'll be looking in detail at the background to the case and asking if Harry Collinson's death could have been prevented. But we start at Newcastle Crown Court, where the verdicts were guilty of murder, guilty of attempting to murder another council official, and guilty of wounding Police Constable Stephen Campbell and BBC reporter Tenny Belmont. Chris Eakin was in court. Tonight, the prison warders were taking away a convicted murderer. The jury had dismissed the argument that Albert Dryden was mentally ill, and from the short time it took to reach a unanimous verdict, it was clear they saw Dryden as a cold-blooded killer. His friends were in a state of shock. We asked what you think of the Sorry, verdict. Sorry, pal, but uh, she's pretty upset, man. Yeah, go ahead, the comment on find out by the bloody comment. The detective who led the first interviews after the shooting emerged with PC Stephen Campbell, the policeman who was shot by Dryden. My thoughts at the present moment are with Harry Collinson's family, uh, with the, everybody else who's been touched by it, but also, you know, we, we should really be thinking about Albert Dryden's family as well, because they have to pick the pieces up as well. Albert Dryden's brother-in-law gave the family's response. Donald, we've got to accept the verdict of the jury. We've got a fairly sound judicious system in this country and one must accept that verdict that the jury have come to. As the verdict was announced, there were gasps from the public gallery. Albert Dryden himself sat still with his head bowed but showing little emotion. The judge told him to stand up. She said he had acted in a grotesque way. And she said that while his mind was as it had come over when he was in the witness stand, he was clearly a dangerous man. She was in no doubt that there was just one sentence, life. The cornerstone of the case was the video material shot by a BBC North camera crew. The footage was shown to the jury and was a key factor in their decision to convict Albert Dryden. Beverly Thompson now reports on the day a television crew was a witness to murder. Viewers may find some of these pictures disturbing. It was the climax of an extraordinary planning row. Three years after Albert Dryden had built his bungalow without planning permission, Derwentside Council brought a bulldozer to demolish it. But at the gate, Albert Dryden made it clear that he would not allow the demolition to go ahead. And with a BBC camera crew recording the proceedings, Albert Dryden confronted the chief planning officer, Harry Collinson. And if you come through them gates, you'll be charged with criminal damage. And if you knock that down, you'll have £40,000 to pay out your own money when you go to the Crown Court. Well, because of the arch that you've got here, we're not going to try and come through the gate. Well, you're not going through the fence and blowing all them trees down. We're, we're, we'll go through the fence if you don't open the gate. Now, we'll, have to, we'll obviously have to take the fence down with the machine. So, if you want, you can have some time to remove the fence yourself to minimise the damage. Do you want to do that? Albert Dryden was convinced that his appeal to the Department of the Environment was valid and that he could stave off the demolition. But as Harry Collinson explained the procedure, Dryden made the first of his threats. Well, you might not be around to see the outcome of this disaster. Now, you've been warned. Can you explain what you mean by that? Albert? Well, I'm not going to explain, but if you had any sense, you would go away now. The council delegation moved to the fence where they intended to gain entry to the site. As Harry Collinson remonstrated with a friend of Dryden's, he didn't realise that the approaching gun was real. Go ahead up there. Can you get a shot of this gun? Out of it. Seconds later, Harry Collinson was shot dead. As more shots were fired from a pistol, the BBC North camera crew and reporter Tony Belmont ran for cover. We were standing watching what was going on. The chief planner um, was trying to persuade the chap to, to uh, move out the way and let the digger go in. And then uh, a shot rang out, the chief planner fell to the ground and I, uh, I heard, felt a shot in the arm. And I've clearly been shot here in the arm. I'm now hopefully going to get some medical treatment. Oh, policeman was also shot in the buttock here. 
and uh, uh, and the councillor was shot in the chest. Albert Dryden retreated to a caravan where he was surrounded by police marksmen. Two hours later, he was coaxed out of his hiding place and driven away. The dispute over the bungalow stretches back to 1989, when Albert Dryden started building without planning permission. While his friends saw him as one man fighting the planning bureaucracy, Derwenside Council viewed him as someone determined to buck the system. Alan Powell looks back at the history. Locals called it the house in the hole. Albert Dryden claimed it was a summer house for his mother. He bought the plot of land in Buttsfield in 1984 using his redundancy money from Consit Steelworks. It became his obsession, but he was building without planning permission and was continually frustrated. This is only half the project. The other half is a, a, a nuclear fallout shelter to go on the back. But you say you don't require planning permission because it is so low in the ground. So low in the ground, yeah. And I've yet to see the documents to state that you have to have planning permission. I've asked several times. Albert Dryden was born in this terraced house in an area of Consett known as the Grove. The Drydens had a large family. Albert had four sisters and three brothers. George Cameron is a lifelong friend. He was present at the bungalow on the day of the shootings and still believes Dryden's actions were those of a desperate man and totally out of character. If any of the children come with a broken wheelbarrow or a broken bike, he would fix it, no bother, no hesitation. If they ever wanted anything repaired, he used to take it to Albert, Albert would repair it, and that's the kind of bloke he was. He wouldn't wouldn't harm anything. In fact, even now when I talk about him, I fell up uh, to think that these, this is what's happened. And in one sense, two lives ruined, one Mr Collison's life and second his own. Doenside Council knew a different Albert Dryden. He was particularly well known to the planning department as a man determined to buck the system. Chief Planning Officer Harry Collinson became the target of the aggression and was accused of harassing Albert Dryden and sticking rigidly to the rules. When a person determines to book the system, to uh, resist and to turn and avoid and, and fight uh, decisions rightly reached, then um, no, I, I think I might be inclined to raise the question, who was harassing who? The council's dossier on Albert Dryden started in April 1989 when he was advised to stop building what appeared to be a bungalow for which he had no planning permission. A month later, the council authorised an enforcement notice ordering the removal of the building. In June 1989, Albert Dryden appealed to the Department of the Environment. After a public inquiry, an inspector found in favour of the council and Mr Dryden was given three months to demolish the bungalow himself. But in September, the bungalow was still standing. The council told Albert Dryden that if he continued to resist the order, he could face prosecution. He made it clear he would resist. Albert Dryden and the council were now set on a collision course. He appealed again to the Department of the Environment. The council set a date for demolition. We were aware that there was a risk attaching to this operation higher than perhaps one normally expects uh, a local government officer to have to take. Uh, and in recognition of that, I think, as you full well know, um, our officers, our lawyer, uh, Harry himself, the council's engineer and contractors, had a, a meeting with the the local constabulary to seek their assistance in uh, ensuring that they were allowed to go about executing the lawful enforcement action. 